The campaign of Rob Quist made a whistle stop Sunday at the Phillipsburg Brewery, meeting and speaking with voters in Granite County as he barnstorms across the state. Quist, who is currently battling Republican candidate Greg Gianforte and Libertarian Mark Wicks, is a Democrat who wants to fill the congressional seat vacated by Ryan Zinke. Zinke won last fall's election over Denise Juneau, but was promptly tagged by President Trump to take over as Secretary of the Interior and leaving his office vacant. Quist spoke briefly to the crowd on hand, but spent most of his time talking one-on-one with people to hear their views and connect with them on a personal level. QSPN was granted an exclusive interview with Quist amidst the throng of supporters after his speech. Following his Quist speech in its entirety and his one-on-one interview with QSPN Managing Content Editor, Tim Allen. Thank you so much. I sure appreciate it. Well, it's great to be here in Peaburg. You know, this is one of my favorite cities here in Montana. And even before we did the uh, Aber Days and, and the early concerts over at the at the rink, um, I had the great honor of playing in, in your theater a number of times. And so it was uh, that was just really a, a thrill for me. What a great old theater! And I I, I think the key word here is old. <laughs> but uh, I haven't had a chance to be into it lately. But uh, anyway, it's just it's it's really great for me to get out in, into rural Montana because. When I started this journey, I actually, I did announce on my birthday on January 5th, I announced and threw my big and well-traveled hat into the ring for to be uh, Montana's next conference. And people were very surprised about that, you know, and probably nobody was more surprised than me. But uh, but I guess I realized that I've really been representing the state of Montana all my life, you know, through my music, my poetry. And of course, uh, I've, uh, I've been a uh, cultural representative to, for the state of Montana to Kumamoto, Japan for three consecutive years. Oh. And uh, also I was uh, a board member for the Montana Arts Council, you know, helping to, to really uh, implement the arts throughout the state of Montana. And so uh, so I guess when I really had to think about you know this, I know it's, it's gonna be, a, it was a pretty wide U-turn, but given the fact that I love the state so much, it's one that I had to make. I guess it all came down to that quote by Ernest Hemingway that that our lives are measured by the magnitude of the challenges we accept. And I knew there could be no greater challenge than this one, but it's one I had to make. And I'm so glad I did because everywhere we go in the state of Montana, people are fired up like I have never seen before in the state. This has just been an amazing journey for me. We go up down up and down the High Line, you know, and all the way out to eastern Montana. And uh, I tell you what, it's like the sleeping giant has awoken in this in this election. So. Jim mentioned, you know, of course, my opponent is uh, is is throwing big dollars at this. Not only him, but that the congressional leadership fund. I mean, you've probably seen some of those ads. You know, and my favorite was Rob Quist, out of tune with Montana. And I'm thinking seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's uh, I can't wait for it. We have a debate coming up on April the 29th uh, for MTN News in Great Falls, and so it'll be a chance for me to to stand Mr. next to Mr. Jim Forte and see. Just exactly who is out of tune with Montana? You know, it's uh, I've been all over the state making personal connections with everybody, and all he's really done is just hide in his lair and you know kind of lob these these uh, negative ads at me. But I don't know if you've had a chance to see it, but uh, I first of all, I want to make an announcement. Um, with with all of our contributions, we are at 1.25 million dollars. <laughs> Off that tax bill yet? <laughs> <laughs> that was paid off a long time ago. Right? <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, you know, of course, uh, that's allowed us to to uh, launch some uh, some ads of our own. Has anybody seen our? We have two ads running on TV. Has anybody seen these now? Yeah. And of course, you know, uh, we uh, we're still taking the high road. You know, it, it's not my nature. You know, even though Montana Ranch kids aren't afraid of getting down and getting in the mud, still through through all these attack ads. You know, I'm taking the high road because I think if you just if you try to get down in the mud with everybody else, you're just going to get stuck, right? Yep. right. And so, uh, you know, my opponent spent six million dollars in the last election, and so we know how that turned out. And of course, that was to run for the governorship, and now it seems like that he's running for the house. Well, the U.S. House of Representatives should not be his consolation prize. Yeah. Yeah. This is the U.S. House of Representatives. It is not the Millionaires Club. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, 
our founders, you know, um, back when they created this, uh, they they met for, I think, um, since this is a two-year term, their goal, goal was to make this representative to the people, you know, someone who would come and serve and, you know, and be a representative of the people. That's precisely what I, I have in mind. I'm not going to uh, to run for any other office in this one, and my whole goal is to be the representative for all, the, all of Montana, not just one demographic, not just one party, but the whole state of Montana. That's the goal here. You know, somebody told me that, you know, when you win this thing, you're going to have more square miles under your jurisdiction than any other member of Congress. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but I, I welcome this challenge because, you know, one of the things I love is to travel the state of Montana. It's such a beautiful state to travel through. And so um, I've, I've accepted a new sense of responsibility and when I see you know, Montana and the people who live here, I realize that, that now it's it's becoming a, a big responsibility for me. And this is something I'm really accepting gladly. Well, I just want to thank all of you for coming today. You know, this is this is gonna take all of us to do this. You know, obviously we're up against some pretty significant dollars and uh, so and of course, uh, everybody thinks we have an uphill battle because uh, because uh, Trump won the state uh, by 20 points last time. But uh, I'm feeling really good about where we are, given the fact that we have all these contributions. I was going to say about the contributions, there are, um, I can't remember, I think there's over 20,000 different contributions, but they are uh, at an average of $40 each. So, and we, but we are getting up. That's, that's great. And that's, that's part of the grassroots movement that we're getting together for this. And of course, we're starting to get uh, some more uh, help from outside, too. I've been endorsed by MoveOn.org and also by, uh, let's see, Danny Koss endorsed us. And so we're starting to get some, some help. And then so watch tomorrow. We're going to have a big announcement about someone who's going to be coming out to, to support me. So that's... Watch for that tomorrow. It's, it's going to be big news. It's going to be real big news. Does he live at Georgetown Lake? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that that gentleman has already endorsed me, okay. and so I'm sure she's talking about Governor Schweitzer. Here. But uh, when I first uh, announced this, you know, a day and a half after I announced my candidacy, uh, Governor, former Governor Schweitzer endorsed me, and so instead of pushing our little boat out into the stream, all of a sudden we were launched. We were going full bore. So. So I'm hoping that uh, Brian will come out and, and do some events with us as well. But anyway, uh, I just want to thank you all so much for, for your contributions and for for uh, you know stepping out and, and helping us to uh, to do this. You know, knocking on doors, and making phone calls. I'm just challenging everybody to contact ten people you know and let them know how important that this is. This election could not be be more important. This is a fight for the soul of Montana. I'm serious. You know, my opponent. He is uh, he's blocked stream access, you know, to to people on the East Gallup River, Boom. and he's working with groups that, that want to uh, take our our public lands and transfer them into into private hands. He's he's uh, kind of bankrolled a lot of different groups that do this. You know, this is a big issue for me, as I mentioned. You know, all these other states that I've traveled to over the course of my career, they have lost their their access to public lands, and the number one reason that people quit hunting and fishing and hiking is that they lose their access. In Georgia, places like that, people have to go for two or three hours just to find a place to go recreate. So this could not be more important. So. Well, people like Gia Forte, um, you know, well, first of all, I always say that you know, the, the happiest people I know are the ones that spend the most time, you know, out in Mother Nature. And sometimes when I see somebody who's a little depressed or, or you know, feeling a little uh, <clears throat> grouchy, I always say, and you should go take a walk in the mountains. And on the other hand, uh, maybe my opponent should go take a hike. <laughs> Oh boy, well we're having fun with this anyway. And that's of course, that's always my first rule. It's gotta be fun and it's gotta work for everybody. And my campaign slogan is, is, is um, it's called winning every day. And we really feel like we are, we're winning every day. I have the best staff that you can find. I'm so proud of my staff. They're all really committed people and they're not in it too just for the money. They, they really deeply care about the future of this country. And I know that the reason I have them is because there are no other elections uh, no going on in the, in the entire country. So, but uh, this has been great for me because uh, I just uh, I can't tell you how, how proud I am of my staff. 
anyway, I just want to thank you again for coming out today. And so winning Phillipsburg would be a, a really a big important thing for me. I just talked to a gal over at the Silver Mill and she came up and says, I'm voting for you and I'm a Republican. <laughs> That's how we do this. We know it's the man, not the money. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. But uh, anyway, uh, it's uh, like I said, you know, the the support we're getting is just really palpable. And so our whole goal is to do uh, what I to use a basketball analogy. We're we're doing a full court press across the entire state of Montana. And so we know that uh, the ballots go out in in probably three and a half weeks' time. So, so the important thing is that we have to make sure that everybody knows that we have to vote on Thursday. It's a Thursday this year, Thursday, May 25th. You know, so, so please talk to 10 people and make them aware of everything that is going on. I always ask people to consider to to remember two phrases when you're talking about this election. And the first one is consider the source. You know, when you hear all these things about me. Consider the source of who's talking about that. Their goal is to try to silence me and also to silence the people of Montana. And so it's not going to work. And the other one, the other phrase is follow the money. Follow the money. What is the agenda of these people? You know, and why are they throwing so much money at it? You know, it's, it's people ask me, is why isn't the DNC and the DCCC uh, giving more money? You know, and I'm sure that uh, they're they're probably at some point going to get into this and get off the sidelines. But I think one of the biggest reasons that, that I'm so confident is the fact that they are spending a million dollars to launch these attack ads because they are worried. They are really worried about this. They know that. Anyway, thanks so much for coming out. I just want to say that you know that being here in Phillipsburg is so great for me because I know that all of you share the same concerns and hopes and dreams for the future of this land and this life. And. Uh, I know that uh, if we stand together, that we cannot be denied. But this should be awakened and awakening, not only for the people of Montana, but for the people of this nation. And so, when you cannot stand, I will stand for you. And when you feel like your voices are being drowned out by critics and bullies, I'll stand behind the microphone and make your voices heard. Stand with me, Montana, and I will stand up for you. Thank you so much. For that.